Hi guys, welcome back to Rumorg TV. Executive Editor Andrea Subasati here, and we're going to get to a new episode in just a sec. I wanted to let you know that we here at Rumorg TV are going to take some time off for the holidays. So I hope you've been enjoying our content. We'll be back with more all new episodes in early 2022. So until then, from all of us here at the Rumorg Manor, happy holidays. Yeah. Have you ever wondered if you were psychic? Have you ever wanted to test to see if you had that extrasensory perception? Well, today on Terra Taro, we'll be looking at just that. My name's Laura Hockstead, and I'm an intern here at Rumorg Magazine, as well as a tarot card reader. And on Terra Taro, we look at the use of tarot cards in horror films. Today on Terra Taro, we're going to be doing things a little bit different we're going to be looking at Zener cards. And Zener cards were created in the 1930s at Duke University by Carl Zener, a psychologist. And he created these cards to test people's ESP abilities. How he did this was by creating five universal symbols, which are waves, star, circle, square, and cross. And what he wanted to do was to ask the participants to guess which card he was holding up. And this may be familiar to you if you've seen the opening scene of Ghostbusters. Square. Good guess, but wrong. So I thought we could try a little experiment today. I'm going to hold up one of the Zener cards, and I'd like you at home to focus in on it and try and anticipate which of these five symbols is behind this card. I'll wait three seconds and then reveal it. But if you need a little bit more time to focus in on your psychic abilities, feel free to pause the video. Here we go. Did you imagine the circle? Are you psychic? Let's try again. The waves. Did you see that one coming? One more. The star. Did you anticipate the right images? Well, if you did, then you're already on your way to proving Carl Zener's theory that you might be psychic. So if you were to participate in this experiment and uh, got between six to seven out of the 25 cards, that would be a pretty common response. A smaller percentage of people will get between eight to 15, and even smaller than that will get 20 to 25. And if you're in that small percentile, then Carl Zener would say that you have some psychic abilities. So what does this have to do with Terra Taro? Well, today we're going to be looking at the 2000 Sam Raimi directed film, The Gift. So this supernatural thriller was actually written by Billy Bob Thornton and directed by Sam Raimi. The cast is huge in this film as well. It's basically a who's who of who would appear in an early 2000s thriller. You've got Kate Blanchett, you've got Katie Holmes, you've got Giovanni Ribisi, you have Hilary Swank, you have Michael Jeter, you've got Gary Cole. And how can I forget Keanu Reeves? Oh, uh, new. No. no. Oh. Oh. Hey. I'm on county business, Donnie. Don't fool with me. The film opens with a montage of Zener cards, and we learn that this is what Annie uses to do her readings for people in the town. In one scene, a man shows up at her house and asks for a reading, and she draws the circle card and is able to tell him that his health concerns aren't very serious, but she does pinpoint where in his body he needs to go get checked. So for me as a tarot card reader, I'm looking at this deck and I'm pouring over it and I'm like, what imagery is in this card that she's pulling from to get that answer for that guy? It's a circle, so is that like kind of inside the human body? I'm like trying to interpret it in my brain. Have you been to a doctor? Oh, I don't much like going to no doctors. Well, I think maybe you should go. No, it's not a venereal disease. I think it's just some kind of kidney or some 
bladder infection or something, but it's been around for a while. Lead to more serious problems. When the character of Jessica, played by Katie Holmes, goes missing, her father comes to Annie to get a reading to help them find where her body is. And she pulls three wave cards. And again, me sitting at home trying to interpret this, I'm like, oh, waves, water, she must be in a pond. She must be missing and drowned in the water, which we actually find out is the case. But Annie in this moment interprets these cards as indicating that the girl is missing near flowers and near a fence. So again, I'm like, I don't know what I'm reading into this. <sighs> so then I start thinking that maybe her psychic abilities come through visions and not so much through the cards themselves. And maybe Annie is just using the cards so that the people getting readings from her feel like there's something she's interpreting. And I've actually heard uh, professional psychics say this, that sometimes they use cards as a medium to prove to the person that's getting a reading that there's something there to interpret rather than them just seeing it in their, in their mind. After she does this reading, they are able to locate the missing body of Jessica. And she is near fence and flowers, but more than anything, she's found in the water. So boom, I did it. I solved it. I'm Annie. <laughs> so this leads to the arrest of Keanu Reeves' character, Donnie. After that, his wife goes to Annie again for another reading. And this time she pulls a few different cards. These cards appear in multiple scenes throughout the film. She's very uncomfortable and doesn't really let on what's going on, but we are meant to understand that something terrible has happened or maybe a mistake has been made. Now there's no way for us to interpret what that means because again, she's using these Zener cards and I can't read them. I'm getting more and more frustrated as the film goes on, to be honest. Annie begins to doubt that Donnie is guilty of the murder. So she goes to the prosecutor to ask them to reopen the case. And after that, she returns to the murder site with Jessica's fiance. This results in a huge twist that I didn't see coming and neither did the audience. Yeah, please let me know what you thought and if you were as frustrated as me. So ultimately, if I were to review this film and their use of cards as a divination tool and a storytelling device, I would say this one fails. These cards were not meant to be interpreted in the same way as a tarot card. They were created as a ESP tool, not a divination tool. Well, not a divination tool in the in the classic way of a tarot card deck. Yes, they were uh, used to test people's psychic abilities, but they weren't meant to be a fortune telling device. It made for an interesting watch for me, uh, seeing cards that our main character was interpreting, but then me as the outsider, as the viewer, not knowing what to expect, uh, kind of always kept me guessing. It did make for, for an interesting way to interpret the film. It's her, God it. She's the reason I'm up here. She's a goddamn witch. She couldn't spell from every damn buddy in town. Witch! Witch, can you run? Witch city! So that wraps up another episode of Terror Tarot on Rumorg TV. If you have any thoughts about uh, how we interpreted the film today or the Zener cards, please leave us a comment below. And if you have suggestions about uh, other films that I can cover for this series, I'm always open to hearing them. And as always, remember to like and subscribe to Rumorg TV and join me next time and we'll see what's in the cards. I just like make desperate eye contact with you. I'm like, should I keep going? <laughs> Can I be spooky like this? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs>